Okay, welcome uh, everyone to uh, this uh, special okay talk of uh, today is uh, Thursday. Earlier this week, we have uh, learned about uh, text mining, text analysis. Yesterday, you all played with uh, Donald Trump's uh, Twitter tw tweets, right? And uh, one question some of you may, uh, many of you may ask is what about non-English content? Right, so before I introduce our speaker of this morning, I'd like just very quickly ask people to, so what kind of text you know you read, you know the uh, not just uh, dialect you speak, but you read when they they have a di different textual, you know, language format except English. What kind of language text reading capacity we have in this room? Thai. Thai. Any? So we have Thai. How many other any uh, other people speaking? In the room or oh, uh, read Thai. Okay, what about uh, uh, any other language other than English and Thai? What kind of Chinese? Oh. <laughs> uh, then it's British English also, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. So so. So there are different kind. Yeah, there are different kind of Englishes, all right. But also <laughs> different kind of Chineses. Okay, the official language. Okay, in uh, uh, the Chinese in Singapore is uh, simplified Chinese characters. When computer read it, they're different from traditional. All right, and uh, 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 Professor Liang Hai will be telling us about his analysis of traditional Chinese character. Okay, uh, and, but then it's based even on Cantonese. Okay, it's a uh, and, and, and it's actually more of an informal way of writing Cantonese, not the written way, right? Okay, but uh, let's carry on after different kinds of Englishes and the Chineses and Thai, any other language in the room that we have not mentioned? Malay. Malay, okay, any other Malay reader? Okay, what about Tamil? You know, it's another of uh, Singapore's official language. Anyone read Tamil? No? Any other Hindi? Hindi and Bengali. Bengali, all right, so two more. Any other uh, non-English languages? Tagalog? I suspect uh, 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 Catalina, you know, reads uh, Tagalog, but uh, she's not in the room now. All right, so that's probably it, okay? So with this, you know, th this is really uh, the reason, one of the reasons we have uh, Professor Liang Hai today. And also is because uh, this is the first Right, uh, six in uh, Southeast Asia, which is very multilingual. Okay, in our writing, okay, uh, uh, including online writing. Right, so uh, Professor Liang Hai in, is a, a true leader in the global community of uh, computational social science, especially for people who work with Chinese. Okay, in the among the Chinese language uh, computational social scientists. Uh, 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 Professor Liang Hai is also referred to as Hai Ge, all right? So it's like a bro old brother Hai, okay? Means uh, he's very help he's, he's, he helped foster the community, okay, for many years. Okay, uh, uh, he actually had uh, his background, his education was both in media communication studies and mathematics. So he has a degree in, uh, he's a mathematician, all right? And uh, uh, he uh, was my former colleague in uh, Chinese University of Hong Kong, where he uh, uh, works both in the School of Journalism and Communication and also the Computational uh, Social Science uh, Lab. And his work focuses especially okay, uh, on political communication, okay, including social movements, but also uh, public uh, health. Okay, so he and I, we are both in a large uh, uh, COVID-19, uh, like misinformation, comparative study. So are we still, I still keep, uh, you know, uh, uh, collaborating with him. Uh, and uh, uh, Hai was also one of my uh, tennis buddies. Okay, so he's a very special person and let's put our hands together for Hai. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Jack. So we're going to play tennis later today. <laughs> Just to mention one more thing, in line with today's theme on experiments, he'll also be talking about some of the survey experiments he's done as per the abstract he's provided, right? Hi? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Okay. So 
Yeah, lots of passion today. So, uh, by, by the way, how much time I have today? So you have, I mean, so we have we break for lunch around twelve o'clock. So you can take as much time as you want, but yeah. <laughs> okay. uh, um, so most most talks seem to end by an hour and then keep uh, some time for Q and A. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. So one so, maybe around okay. you can aim for 50, to, 50 minutes to one hour followed by Q and A. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm not sure. So uh, anyway, I, I will try my best to uh, uh, reserve a, um, a time for, for discussions. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> you want to share your screen? Yeah. <clears throat> so, um, okay. So as you can see, actually, uh, the, the title of today, uh, by the way, you can just call me hi. Um, and if you uh, just uh, if you want to know more about me and my publications and whatever, so you can just visit my websites. And I'll, I, I I currently not currently, but uh, I always that I upload some uh, GitHub code and uh, replication materials for my studies. So that if you are interested in for replication studies, then you can can visit my websites. And also there are some other um, computational learning materials as well. So anyway, so um, today I would just want to focus on one uh, example uh, about the political instability in, in Hong Kong. Okay, but uh, through this uh, study, this is an ongoing project, okay? It's not a, a set of papers published, it's, it's really ongoing. Um, I will show some examples, um, not some examples, I'll share with you some findings, but through those findings that you can see that how we can use text mining in particular, uh, the first part is about the detection of content instability, which means that uh, uh, it's quite descriptive using like machine learning and whatever else that you can use to classify the content in different categories. The second part is maybe a little bit more uh, new, okay? So even in the field that is using machine learning for coral inference. So uh, it's, um, I hope that I, I, I can explain it clearly, right? okay? So, but anyway, so if you have any questions, you can just feel free to interrupt me. Uh, I feel very uh, fine with that. So you just, uh, if you have questions, just let me know, okay? So you can ask the questions anywhere during the presentation, okay? So anyway, so before I, I present the, the, the findings, I just want to let you know, introduce some background about the studies. So the first background is about the instability, okay? So, um, so um, it's quite 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 a common uh, social media platforms that the people nowadays that are now a lot of many 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 studies are reported that actually it's increasing the trend. So it's not just the case in Hong Kong, but all around the world, you will find a lot of unstable uh, uh, comments, in particular on social media platforms, including like hate speech, name calling, and the vulgar words and whatever. So. Um, and many of them that are um, actually recent in the, in the, at least in the last five years, there are many, many studies that are interested in the consequences, to study the consequences uh, of a political instability, in particular about the exposure, exposure to the uncivil comments. So, um, so that's what that's that that that's why I want to start a, a, a study, okay? Or why start the start start the project to study something about it. Um, Hong Kong. So that is uh, quite a special case in Hong Kong. That is because that uh, maybe probably that you know that in the last um, 10 years that we have two very large scale protests in Hong Kong. So um, during that time that you will find a lot of uh, the uncivil comments posted online and uh, even even offline. Okay. So why I started this uh, this this project is that uh, a professor our colleague, uh, um, Professor uh, um, jo uh, uh, Joseph Chen, that uh, he told me that he, he found that there are a lot of uh, bad words on campus. This is uh, unlikely that uh, maybe 10 years ago. So I think that is why. So I, 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 I so that's a, that's a direct reason, okay? So uh, the second background about the political instability is um, um, actually what, in particular, what we are going to uh, introduce today is the using text mining, which means that we are going to analyze text, or in particular about online comments. So um, we, we, we indeed uh, maybe um, 
So later I will introduce more about that part, but here you just uh, keep in mind that this is a very important, okay? We're analyzing the content instead of uh, any psychological states like the perceptions. So probably that you will see, okay, there are some uh, typical bad words in English or any other languages. So for sure that we, in general, that we agree that those are bad words and we consider uh, the comments are uncivil. But uh, in, some, in some situations that maybe people may perceive that they are civil, not uncivil. So the perceptions actually is um, a different uh, from content features. So they're different, but what we can do today, at least uh, in most of the cases that we, we use machine learning or any other text mining techniques that we can only analyze the content features. Uh, it's very hard, but it's possible, okay? But usually it's not so easy, okay, to analyze like the perception of other psychological states. Sometimes we can guess, but uh, it's really, really hard. So anyway, um, in, in referring to content features, there are a lot of content features about uh, instability, okay? So um, throughout this project, we will just uh, focus on two of them. One is uh, vulgarity, okay? The second is name calling. So the reason is that this is the most obvious, okay? features that we can find. So, and this is a, a relatively easy task for computers as well. So, um, um, the approach to, to the instability detection and also the consequences usually that we use machine learning, okay? So that's, um, you, can, you can find that there are a lot of uh, supervised, in particular about supervised machine learning. So uh, I guess that you, you, you know need about it, um, the supervised machine learning yesterday, right? So anyway, so this is basically big. that you, yeah. yeah. So basically that you need to code, you need to have a training data set that you, you like you are doing content analysis and you can train um, uh, who many coded the data set as a training data set and ask the machine to learn from the, the training data set. So, and then the machine will automatically do classify the rest of the text into the, the predefined categories as well. So this is a quite popular right now that is, uh, uh, people may think that is a good way to scale up, okay? Uh, the, the, the content analysis as well. So um, I'm for sure, I'm not the first one to try to classify the uh, uncivil comments. So there are uh, many, 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 many others. So uh, as you can see that is, in general, the accuracy is the range. Actually, the variation is a little bit large. So um, at least, um, uh, larger than my expectation that is uh, ranging from 50% to 90%. So, um, so um, for sure. So I can tell you the story that uh, we, we initially we want to study particular instability in Hong Kong that it, as Jack just mentioned that is uh, uh, most of the content, uh, most of the comments posted on Hong Kong local or uh, discussion forums, even on Facebook pages that are using the unstandard Chinese that is uh, the dialect. Uh, in Chinese, uh, uh, Cantonese. So uh, we initially we also want to train a model, okay, a machine learning model. But I can tell you that it's uh, uh, not so good. Later I will show you that is our 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 results. So so that's uh, lead us to rethink that whether this is the only way, okay. Even though this is a very popular way that we we use machine learning. So we turn to another one that is to use a Mexican based. This is actually a traditional even older than machine learning methods that is to define, okay? To try to construct a dictionary uh, with like, uh, including the vocal words, name calling words and whatever else that uh, you can build a dictionary and you can just match the text. So uh, for the classification task. So uh, surprisingly, okay? So the dictionary, the dictionary based method actually is uh, uh, much better, much better than uh, many, many other machine learning models. Uh, later, I will show you that actually we tried many machine learning models, even the most recently developed the deep learning models. Okay. So anyway, so um, in particular that we are not just using uh, a purely uh, naive uh, dictionary based method, but we, we try to incorporate the, what we call word embeddings. Okay, uh, I will introduce the details about the word embeddings. So if you are um, familiar with this term, but anyway, so that is uh, there is a good nature of uh, the word embeddings 
uh, the advantage is that they can help you to find a more similar, similar words, okay? And also analogy, analogies as well. So in this way that actually you can improve the uh, accuracy and uh, 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 as well as the recall. The recall means that you can just, uh, so it's, a, it's not so difficult to just uh, increase the accuracy of the model using dictionary method because that you know some words, for example, one or two words that are very, very dirty, okay? So we're pretty sure about that. So we just use those two words as a dictionary, okay? As in the dictionary to match the text and to find the uncivil comments. What do you found? Are really, okay? They're really uncivil comments, but the problem is that the recall will be very low. The reason is that you missed a lot of other uh, cases, okay? So, um, so using by using the word embeddings that it could help you to enrich your dictionaries that you can find more, okay, similar words, okay, uh, iteratively. So in that case, that you can also to somehow to guarantee the comprehensiveness of your dictionary, okay. So uh, this is a little bit of uh, methodological, okay, background. So. Um, so for sure, right now we're talking about the text mining. As I just uh, mentioned briefly, there are two um, approach for applying, okay? Not, not talking about text mining techniques, okay? What we're talking about is that how to apply the text mining for social science, okay? There are two ways why it's more descriptive, that is uh, for, for measures. What I mean for measures that you can just uh, like use machine learning to, to to nurse some like the topics and whatever, okay? So even like the personalities, so there are a lot of studies that they use machine learning that uh, like to predict the Trump's personality using the tweets and whatever. So this is kind of the things that we just want to, not just want to, okay? The, the primary purpose is that use machine learning or text mining to, to construct some new measurements, not new measurements, maybe as I, I mentioned here, that is the existing concepts and whatever, like uh, what about talking about it in civility, actually this is a conventional traditional concept, okay? You can trace back to many years ago. Uh, anyway, so but we, we can now, we can use new way to measure this uh, conventional concepts using the text or uh, based on the content features as I just mentioned. So, but this is not the end of social science studies, but sometimes that actually this is the end of a computer in computer science. The purpose is that I just didn't to, to train a model that it can classify um, something that into different categories, that, that's all. But, it, but it usually it's not the case for, for us, okay? For social scientists, um, we just use them to develop some new measure, uh, to develop measures. And then we just incorporate those measures into like regression models that you, if you want to use uh, uh, instability to predict like political participation or perception or even emotional reactions or whatever. So that is just the part of your research. Um, but what's new, okay? So not, if you don't want to just want to uh, somehow to re using the text mining to replace con conventional text on uh, uh, content analysis, okay? So for sure, that's good. Okay, so in, in, in the past that, that uh, if you do a content analysis that you can analyze um, um, thousands of like news articles that if you have enough budget to hire undergraduate students um, and you have enough time, like one or two months. So you can analyze the thousands of newspaper articles, but, uh, but now that if you use machine learning that it will can scale up, right? Um, you can analyze millions of tweets, not so hard, okay? Just within within several minutes, prop. so you have a powerful computer. So, uh, but in addition to that, okay, this uh, sometimes I call it a very, uh, not very, okay. Uh, some, sometimes I just call it a naive way to apply the machine learning or uh, text mining for social science research. So, uh, but it, but sometimes even you you just use the machine learning or text mining to develop new measures that you can be innovative. So I, I give you an example here that is uh, uh, what 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 is it called cultural bridges that it, or this is a concept developed by Chris Bell. Okay, I'm not sure that Chris Bell introduced this in 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 his lectures, but 
that is a very interesting one that is to combine uh, social network analysis with um, tax mining. Okay, so the that the the use uh, the analyze the Facebook posts if I'm if my memory is correct. So anyway, so the so the based on the Facebook posts and then the 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 the, the construct what 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 do we call semantic networks based on the content, and then the study the the network structures and it measures the cultural bridges. That means that it, there are some some concepts okay key concepts that can bridge the different communities thematically, okay? That will have some, this is something that is really new, okay? Innovative one that we can use text mining because that you can't imagine you have a positive way to measure that concept, okay? So it's very hard, okay? So the second uh, the second line of research is about um, using text mining for analysis, which means that, um, uh, inferential statistics, okay? You can understand in that way, that we just use a model, like the machine, machine learning or text mining models that are formally for hypothesis testing, not just to, to measure a construct, okay? Not just to measure a construct, but for, uh, we can use those models, so like regression models. So if you are familiar with the, that, okay? Like regression models that you use in machine learning, uh, you use a regression model model for measures, right? You are, you are using that model to test some hypothesis to, to test the relationships among the variables. So this actually similarly for text mining and in particular about machine learning that we can use those models for hypothesis testing, okay? So this is uh, not so popular. So if you read the literature uh, already published, but uh, you, you will see a lot of ongoing project actually is in now um, actually, um, at least I, 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 I read some, um, a lot of, not some, okay, a lot of uh, ongoing projects, uh, ongoing uh, manuscripts actually so talking about this kind of things. So, um, so in, uh, specifically about the core inference, the text, so we're talking about text, okay. The text could be considered as uh, IVs. So that is independent variables that are how text that it can influence whatever else, okay? So um, there is a model already, a model that you can find this, uh, uh, this is a, a developed by Fong and Grimmer, so 60 years ago, anyway. So uh, uh, this is a text effect. This, you, can, you can even find this packaging. This is our package, okay? It's already online. So you can just search that and you can find this text effect. <clears throat> it's very interesting, okay? It's like, um, it's like a topic. It's um, it's it's like a topic of modeling. First, it's like a topic of modeling. So when we are talking, think about that. When we are talking about the text effects, so first you need to define what is text. Okay, what are concepts that it can derive from the text? So as I just mentioned, one way that we can predefine, right? Like you are doing content analysis, that you predefine a list of categories, and you can train machine learning. This is a, this is uh, 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 the, the, the first part, okay? This is about a measurement, but uh, no. So here for the text effects, the, just to think about that, they, they, will, they will not print define, okay? The, 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 they don't print define the categories. They don't, the, they just assume that the text is text, but there are some text latent features that can influence the variable, okay? The verbal could be anything like the engagement, okay? So for example, you can just predict whether what types of tweets are most popular, okay, online. So for, for, for sure, so when, when you want to solve this kind of question, so a very straightforward way that you, you can do, that is uh, you predefine some categories uh, to describe the, the content, content of tweets. Like, okay, you, you think that the politics may be important, okay? So you just classify them into like a political uh, politics, entertainment, uh, culture, and whatever. So you have a very comprehensive list and they classify. And then you just compare the like the political tweets with the cultural tweets. And you see the political tweets may be attracting more replies or favorites. And then you think, okay, that the political tweets then maybe probably that is, um, um, 
will be more popular on Twitter and it's right. So this is a conventional way, but, uh, but the tax effects of the model, when we consider the tax as IVs, we don't assume that there is something like that. We just assume there are some latent tax features. We don't know what's that, okay? <laughs> and that one, that those latent features that actually can predict the popularity of the tweets, okay? So, and then the back that is what detect those latent features in the model. What, what is the output of the model? That actually the two parts. One part is like the topic modeling that it will generate some topics. Uh, what is the called latent features? So they say, okay, if with those features, those words, and then they will be more popular and whatever, okay? So uh, that will be useful. Later I will show you an example about that. So the second is that, um, about the deep, uh, to use the text as a dependent variables. So this is a very intuitive, and like if you are familiar with the, the what do we call, uh, the structure of topical modeling by, by Molly Roberts. So that is a structure of topical modeling, which is uh, extension of uh, the, the, the conventional like LDA topical modeling. So you can just incorporate some covariance into the, the topical modeling. So when, once you in, once you included the 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 covariance, and then you can specify which variables that can predict the prevalence of a certain topic. So that's actually you can in those cases that is the the dependent variable that actually is the topic of prevalence, and then you can just incorporate more what covariance in okay in the regression model okay. So the last one uh, is the most complicated. It's actually it's um, not so easy to 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 solve. Okay. So the text as a confounding variables. Okay, which means that we need to controlling for text. So the text could be served as a confounding variables, which means again. So if we want to control for text, how? Again, so you can develop some variables from the text. But as I just mentioned, this is probably not a good way. So unless you know the natures of the text and you, you have a very comprehensive list of those variables that are almost equivalent to the text. Otherwise, that it's very hard to control. So later I will focus on this one, the controlling variables that we use some uh, machine learning, okay? So just uh, some background, okay? So now, um, I will use the, the project I just mentioned in this video project as an example to, to show that basically um, in this project that we, we, we use the most of the techniques, okay? So this is a lot of, uh, sometimes this is uh, um, intentionally that we, we know that why we run this kind of models, but uh, sometimes I can, to be honest, okay? So sometimes that is just for fun, okay? So I think that maybe probably that uh, uh, just curious. I I want to run the models to see what's uh, difference. So so it's not well organized because as I just mentioned, it's a really ongoing project. Okay, it's not based on some um, published um, uh, uh, papers. So it's not well organized. So if you if you think that my, I didn't follow my logic, okay, just let me know. Okay, I I was trying best to explain. Uh, anyway, about the data, okay? The data basically is come from um, two major discussion forums in Hong Kong. So the, the discussion forums are very important, okay? So during the protests, okay, since 2014 okay, um, and to 2019. Okay, why is uh, the LIHKG, okay? Lianden, okay? In case that you, you can understand some Chinese, but anyway, so later I will show you some examples in Cantonese that they are really hard to translate into English. I'm sorry about that. Even it's very hard to translate into Cantonese, uh, Mandarin as well. So anyway, so the LIHKG, that is um, um, the, the relatively new discussion forum. So, the, so if you are unfair, uh, if you are not a, Sure, but what is uh, what what what, <coughs> uh, what does uh, uh, a discussion forum looks like? It's uh, quite similar, like Reddit, 
reddata.com okay so um it's uh it's old uh probably um, it's, old literally, uh, it's organized just like uh hong kong's it's often referred to as hong kong's reddit right uh, so yeah the information yeah. structure is very similar yeah yeah so it's actually it's uh the oldest the form of of social media so that is the earliest form of social media once that uh, the discussion form for, form so are very very popular okay around the world they are like different so you can still find some of them so not just uh, um in hong kong or in china but all around the world okay so the li hkg that is a relatively new discussion forum that is uh, uh um, it's supposed to be th that is the most important uh, communication channel during uh, the 2019 protests in Hong Kong. Okay, so we, we just archived the, all the um, all the comments, uh, all the threads and the comments uh, from LI HKG. So uh, basically, the LI HKG, a little bit of background about that the the political background of LI HKG that is. Uh, uh, Surely that is a pro democracy. Okay, so there are two camps, two camps that before 2020 in Hong Kong, that is why it's a pro democracy. Okay, uh, another is a pro establishment that is more pro Beijing. Okay, so you can imagine that. The Hong Kong discuss that once are also very uh, pro democracy, but recently that is uh, clearly there is a shift that uh, to the pro establishment, uh, pro Beijing. So you can just uh, ask, use the two forums as a, uh, for comparison as well. So uh, the Hong Kong discuss uh, this discussion forum said with um, um, actually it's a, a very general discussion forum. It's so not just for political or public issues. So we we intentionally selected the eleven public forums. So all the corporates, okay. Uh, in this project, uh, just about the public issues, not like sports or entertainment, celebrities, no, no, that kind of things. So, and then we use this, uh, the first the step that we, 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 we deal with the data, that is we train a word to vector model. So that is uh, uh, one of the word embeddings models. So that actually, this is the oldest one. So recently that you can find something new like called BERT, B E. BRT, right? BERT model and whatever. So the word embeddings. So and we train with two, 215 dimensions and I use uh, this is a continuous bag of words model. So uh, I, will, I will back to this point later, but I just let you know. So we, this is a, we initially would train this kind of uh, uh, word embedding models first. So, and for, uh, for validation, because that's just one, no matter whether you use uh, supervised or unsupervised uh, machine learning, that is basically you can think that for any text mining models, I guess that is the most important thing is that not the model, but the validation for social science. Then you need to validate because that is the machine. What does the machine learn? Okay. How the machine classify your text, your content? Actually, for social scientists, we usually, okay will not trust okay the machines so you need to try your best to validate it, to show your readers okay in particular your reviewers or editors that what you did is uh, really really okay valid so this is the validation that we we, we use the many coding so we selected 3000 comments randomly uh including some pre so we first we have some as i just mentioned that we define a dictionary is that it's just a small dictionary later we use that as say the words uh to enrich the dictionary so we we pretty sure about that some words are really uh dirty okay really bad so uh, we according to those words we ran this select the 1000 uh vulgar com uh, comments with vulgar words and one something with name calling words and one something with uh, without them that we consider them as civil. So this is uh, what we call training data set, uh, the validation data set, and we, we code manually according to um, the defi operational definitions from, from the literature. Okay, so for sure, as a kind of analysis that we need to report this kind of thing. So, okay, as I just mentioned, so if you are not so familiar with the word embedding, what's that? So uh, 
So the word embedding, uh, what is the embeddings, okay? Uh, as I just mentioned, okay, the embeddings that you can understand as a, a vector. So this is why we initially we call the first the word embedding model called word to vector. That means to convert the word to vector. So think about that. Uh, for the for the conventional way of text mining, that is the very first is the step that is the tokenization, right? So if you have a document that you need to tokenize uh, those documents into some words, a list of words, right? This is what we call bag of words model. So one word is one word, and then you can create a document term matrix. So with one document, uh, with different documents as those, and the different words as the columns, right? So if that if that word is in the document that we can indicate as one or zero, also uh, use the frequency to indicate that. So anyway, so so one word is uh, really associated with just uh, simply consider as one word. So uh, later we found that this is not so good. So the reason is that it's really hard to to find the uh, synonymy, synop the analogies. Okay, so. Um, so that's why they develop a, another way that how, how about if we can just represent the word as a vector instead of just as a single value, okay? So next, the cat. So you will see there are different features, okay? This is the arbitrary features anyway. So, so you use a value to indicate, okay? So cat is a living being and whatever. So you can just uh, then value in that way. So later then you can use the cat to uh, you can represent the cat, this word, uh, with a vector, okay, in this way. And also similarly is your kitten, okay, in that way. So you, you will, and, and after the dimension reduction, so you can just represent the like in a two dimension um, plot, and you will see that a cat actually is quite similar to kitten. So, yeah, so that's it. You can just compare, you can just calculate the like a, the cosine similarity between the two vectors. You can like calculate the similarity score. So you, you will get that actually. So the, the score will be very high. So um, so in that way, so you can find a lot of similar words. Okay. So once you represent uh, the words into vectors, so that will improve the, the calculation of this uh, similarity scores. So in addition to finding the similar words, this is uh, uh, what we call uh, an uh, use, okay? So that is like, a, uh, like man and woman, okay? So this is an, uh, the analogy is a king and a queen. So uh, in, in, the, in, in the word to vector, okay? Word to vector model. So if you let the computer know a relationship like man and a woman, and then you can ask the computer to search the, the, the associated words with the king that it would the word for the queen. Okay. So this is not this is something like the equivalent because the relationship between men and women and the king and the queen, the, the relationships are equivalent. Okay, right? So this is equivalence that is will be very important in our case at least, okay, to find some uh, analogies uh, from the world. I will show you some uh, example right now. So um, I'm, I'm sorry, as I just mentioned, it, that is in Cantonese, okay? It's even um, not a standard Chinese. I don't even know how to just uh, translate them into Mandarin. So, but I just uh, I can, can show you, this is a uh, name callings that we, 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 we found from, from the discussion forums. But, but if, if you, if you read Cantonese, that will be in, very interesting for you, okay? So you will know that how they use, uh, how innovative, okay, the internet users are, okay, during the protest. So uh, the, uh, we, we roughly classify the, the, the name calling terms that are in different categories. So I can show you this is, uh, this is, for example, this category is about a Hong Kong government that is targeted to Hong Kong government, okay? So uh, this one, okay? Uh, this is several ones, okay? One, two, three, four, five. Oh, actually from here. So they are all talking about the, uh, the, the needer, okay? The no-code needer. 
Lin Zheng Yue Er, Karen Ne Ne. Okay. So, but it would have different variations. So think about that. Actually, it's a quite a um, there are similar words, okay. But it, but before even I guess that I'm one of the experts in the local politics. But before I just run the model, I cannot imagine there are so many variations, okay, <laughs> about that. So if if you just solely based on the expert to develop to construct the dictionary, that will be very very different yeah, difficult. Okay, you will. It's very difficult to get a very com relatively com comprehensive dictionary. So there are some others, okay, like this one that is uh, targeted to to the protesters, okay. So there are some typos, like this one that actually is a typo. If you yeah, if you just compare them, actually you, you, you will see that they are similar, but actually they are too different. This is a, just a typo of this one, okay. So the word embedding that will just uh, find the typos even for you, if the consider they are similar. So now back to the point of how the word embeddings that can, can find those kind of even typos from the corpus. So the, the actually what they did, that is a, a machine learning model. So they will consider, they will pick, for example, giving, giving a document Okay, with with one thousand words, and then we will randomly pick out. They will randomly delete some words from the document, and then they will train a machine. Okay, they will train a machine to predict the missing words using what using the contextual words that the words surround them, surround the missing words. So for example, I'll give you a very uh, simple example. So if you ask me, how are you? I say, I'm, I'm, so, and then I will miss five. And I'll ask you to predict for sure that if you see the context, you ask me, how are you? I say, I am. So for sure, the next property will be fine or bad, okay? But it most likely will be fine. So that is a word embedding, okay? So that's why you can see some typos, okay? Because that is, we use those words in the similar context. Uh, I would guess that maybe they are the same thing, okay? Is that okay? <clears throat> so this will be very, very useful. One question. Yeah. Yeah. question. In the chat? Or... Yes, okay. oh, in the chat, right? Okay. Or no, did you, no, no. no. Okay, there's a question. Okay, so yeah, for sure, Why? that is politically incorrect. So this is just an example, okay, not from me. I just copied it online. So this is just a, um, this is not, this is not true, okay. This is just uh, gave you some features, but I will just see one more uh, thing about that. So sometimes, indeed, okay. If you, you, you find a large, a large scale and even representative uh, um, uh, corpus, like from Facebook, Twitter, and whatever, so you, you have uh, many, many data sets to train. And indeed, you find that actually what is stated here that is a man is called negative, but a woman is positive on royalty. It's quite possible, I can tell you. This actually generally reflects the bias of the corpus. And that's why. Uh, you will see there are several important studies using this word embedding uh, approach to detect the bias, okay, in text, like a political or gender bias, stereotype or whatever. So that is a good way to study that. Yeah, yeah so we have a question. Yeah, uh, I thought question is, yeah, uh, so this number will be different in different corpus, right? Because different corpus have different biases. Is that, can you hear me? Could, uh, hi, could you hear the question? No, no, not so clear. Can you speak this way? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, does different corpus have different numbers uh, because different yes. corpus have different biases. So, so numbers will be different, right? Yeah, for sure. Okay. 
So yeah, that's also. that's uh, uh, that's very important question. Okay, so um, that's good observation. So if you train the data, okay, using different corpus, and actually you will find that they are different because that is what represent they will represent like uh, uh, the words in different ways. So sometimes that are even more interesting, you can just compare different corpus in terms of the bias. Okay, for example, you can compare Chinese with English and you will see that they are totally different. So I, uh, I can give you some very simple example that you can actually can uh, do it. So like we're, uh, we, we usually talking about the left and right politics, right? But the left and the right in the, you know, in the West and in, in Chinese actually that means different things. So probably that if you train uh, the model using Chinese or so using English, and then you can just see how they represent left and right differently. For sure, they are different, right? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Uh, and one more question. Uh, I don't quite understand why we want dimensional narrative reduction here. Just for visualization? So no, not just for popularization, and also for calculation. So you will, yeah. So once you run the model, you will, you will know that it's a very, very slow. Okay. <laughs> it's a computational demanding. So it's uh, it's a very complicated model. So if you okay. if you don't reduce the dimensions that are probably that you can not get anything um, within one or several years. Uh, a second reason is that why we usually conduct this uh, dimension reduction in machine learning. That is, uh, we indeed we have some theoretical reasons, not just the practical. Uh, that is, uh, you know, that in the training data set, uh, there is a lot of noise. So the dimension reduction that actually can somehow to reduce this kind of noise. The second, the second theoretical point is that this is a common way to overcome what we call overfitting. Okay. So think about that if you run a regression model, you have a 100 variables, but it, you just uh, for a survey data, you only have a 100 respondents. And, and then in your regression model, you have a 100 uh, variables. So for sure that your R score will be 100%. This is what I call overfitting. It does not mean that your model is better than others, okay? So in text mining, this is a common pitfall, okay? Because that, uh, think about that, uh, when you run machine learning model, logistic, reg logistic regression model, for example, okay? Mm -hmm. So now you, based on a document term matrix, so for sure they'll have uh, several thousands of doc, uh, terms or words in the documents, which means that you have uh, several thousands of variables in your logistic regression model that it will it's very easy to get overfitted. Uh-huh. I feel you really yeah. think yeah. So you're yeah. you need to yeah. Yeah. Hi, has a question. Yeah, so hi, hi. I have a follow-up question regarding the uh, gender bias and other biases you just mentioned. Mm -hmm. uh, if correct me if I'm wrong, I remember that uh, a lot of um, algorithm that efforts to detect bias in this NLP model actually using this type of uh, bag of words and to see uh -huh. if CEO and scientists are score higher and positive on gender versus nurse and some other occupation score uh -huh. are lower. So if, uh, I'm curious, like in, uh, in, in this situation, if you find this type of gender bias in this bag of words, what are the strategies to de-bias um, from uh, the machine learning uh, perspective? Is that I don't know if, if that's clear. Like if you, after you find this biases right yeah. in this bad word, right? Is there a way to correct the bias so that we don't have that type of bias in, in the uh in the data set before we move on to the next stage of data analysis? So I think something like um you know over sampling or over like yeah. sampling uh, like here or I mean yeah that's um, I mean yeah I think high is probably better suited to answer that. So yeah. I think what what Randon is saying is, is there a way we can we can correct the bias before we actually analyze the data? And I, I was thinking of oversampling from minority mm. subsamples and stuff like that. Yeah. So maybe you can. That, that is a good way. Uh -huh. So I I I'm not 
I didn't try, okay, my, myself, but I, I know there are some uh, groups that actually not, they are working on this kind of things. So uh, in general, it's that uh, this is a, there is a very central question, okay, behind this, uh, uh, this, 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 this techniques, that is of, of how we define representativeness, okay? So that's important, okay? So if you think about that, if you train a data, on a really truly, so think about that. If we we really have a very representative corpus, and we train on this uh, representative data. So think about that. What do we get that we cannot see that is a bias, that is a reality. Uh huh. So, but the problem is that it's there is no consensus in particular in computer science. What is representative. So the thing about the, what is a representative, as I just mentioned, okay, so the minority, okay, the minority in, in, in the population, that is indeed the minority. So if you train, use the population, and you will see the bias. Okay, but, it, but the thing about that, if you think that the minority should be equivalent to others, and then you can just uh, a sample more minority coppers and less about others. And then you will, you will not find this bias. Do you think that this is more representative than the, than the previous one? So, so uh, I guess that is somehow it's a little bit of philosophical. <laughs> anyway, so, but I will not technically- so, can so yeah, I'll just maybe add something here, to, uh, follow up yeah. question to high here. So, I think it depends on also the kind of, um, you know, what you're using the algorithm for, right? For example, if you're thinking of things like self-driving cars and, and you need like bias and you need a, you know, uh, you, you need, a, you need a, a data set of, you know, what kind of people, right? Of people walking on the roads. And if you don't have a diverse data set there, then uh, as has been shown, right? Uh, self-driving cars tend to crash more into people of color, um, more and can't recognize or even in like facial recognition systems where they are bad at recognizing people of color uh, pe minorities and because the the mostly white faces are so much more better represented in those data sets in those cases i guess over representation matters because you need to tell the algorithm that these are legitimate human faces again right uh, it's not just uh, some kind of specific face but it, but say if you're describing certain phenomena then i think it also then it helps to kind of show the extent or you're trying to demonstrate the extent of inequality or the extent of bias then it then you may not need to oversample right so yeah, yeah. does it make sense yeah great yeah any any other questions no. okay so uh, probably i need to continue uh -huh. So uh, back to the point here. So, so uh, why we train the uh, 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 word embedding, the word to vector model that is uh, not for detecting the bias for sure that we just want to enrich our dictionary. So this is a workflow that how we enrich the dictionary. So first we, we have the corpus as I just mentioned and we train a word to vector uh, model at, and then we get the word embeddings. So what is a word embedding? So that means for each word we have, a, we represent each word as a vector, okay? That a vector has 215 dimensions. So, and then we need to, this is a, something that is a human input. We have some seed words. So as I just show you that we, we indeed, we have some bug words and name calling terms as well, but it's not comprehensive, right? So we will miss a lot. So if you use the initial use the seed words that probably that will get a high accuracy, not high accuracy, high precision, but not a, but a very no recall, okay? So this is a, basically, this is a, a common problem of any, any keywords method. So like you, you want to use any keywords to query, to search the tweet, uh, tweets on Twitter. Uh, this is a commonly used, uh, um, Data connection, okay, uh, on on Twitter. So you you I, I I 
I, I guess that most of you have read those kind of articles, a lot of those are kind of articles. So you can, can imagine that it never, uh, really uh, the authors actually uh, measured the accuracy or reported the accuracy, how reliable, how accurate those keywords are selected to query. Okay, so for example, you want to see the U.S. inaction, I usually use the hashtag U.S. inaction, right? So, or some, some similar ones. So think about that. I guess that if you use the hashtag, uh, hashtag uh, U.S. inaction, that, that, that's precise, okay? Which means that what you get, surely, okay? I guess that most of them are really uh, talking about the U.S. inaction, but the progress is going miss a lot other relevant tweets as well. So uh, this is a common problem of keywords queries, okay? So anyway, so we want to enrich, okay? To enrich the seed words, uh, the dictionary. So how to enrich is that we just uh, we use the word embedding as I just uh, show you the example for cat. It's easily we find the top similar words with the kitten, okay? So in that similar ways that we, we threw for each word in the set of words that we search the top keywords. We search the top of similar words. And then we, this is a can enrich the dictionary and then we're manually filtering. So we, why do we need to manually the filtering? For example, some keyword, okay? So that indeed, that is a quite similar according to the, the similarity score, but probably that we sometimes it means other things. So we, we also need to manually filter out uh, some words and then keep the rest. So we use this way to refine the dictionary uh, and then now we get some new words, okay, in addition to the single words in the, in the first round. And then we can just re uh, repeat this process that it defines the top similar words of the new words. So you just iterate this process many times until you cannot find any new words, okay? So, and finally, you can um, do the validation. Okay, so now you have a very relatively comprehensive dictionary in that way. It's a, so the method is not, not uh, how to say it. So it's, I guess that it's easy to understand and also easy to implement it, okay? So, but the problem is that you need to, uh, it's not a purely automatic, which means that you need to somewhere like to construct the seed of words manually and also you need to manually filtering. So uh, this may cost some time. So we just try, okay, how many rounds, how many times we need to repeat this process. So here that you can see that normally that uh, around uh, 10 rounds, repeated this 10 times, then we cannot find any more uh, vulgar words. And for name calling that it will be longer, that is, and, um, around 15 times repeated. But, but you will see that actually, so if you are not a, want to uh, uh, really, okay, achieve uh, to get a very, very comprehensive, like to exhaust uh, the process, which means that uh, here, initially we de developed this in, in a way that you need to stop until that you can't get any new words, okay? So, but you, you can set the cut point like uh, you can get a, um, no more than 10 and whatever, then it will stay. Uh, st uh, you, you can stop and you will see that actually you can just repeat this process in several rounds and you will get it, um, the dictionary. Okay, this is a validation as I just mentioned is that we, we have a, a human encoded data to test the precision and the score. And uh, this is uh, quite typical in computer science that is a table that we list all the methods that we tried and show the last one our own and always the last one is the best. So anyway, so you will see a lot of this kind of studies in, in computer science. Uh, but anyway, I, 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 what we tried, okay? So we used uh, a naive base, logistic regression, SVM, and a random, folder, uh, random forest, SGB and whatever. So, and for each one that we, we use both the uh, uh, bag of words model and uh, we use the TF-IDF, which means that the term frequency uh, inverse um, document frequency. So the TF-IDF weighting that is the reweight to the document term matrix. So that are usually recommended uh, for, for the text classifications using the supervised machine learning. 
As you can see that actually, we actually not started from our, as I just mentioned from the dictionary method, uh, because that we intuitively that we started from some supervised machine learning as I, as I just uh, uh, told you. So the problem is that I'm not so satisfied with uh, the accuracies. So it's sometimes I guess that the like around 80, uh, point, point 0.8, yeah, 0 0.8. That is uh, acceptable, okay, in in in, in most uh, situations, okay. So the reason that we are so satisfied with that is because that uh, um, uh, we have some collaborators that is uh, uh, follow the traditional standard. The things that are like uh, in counter analysis, okay, the agreement is that me. Uh, the usually expect more than 0.8, uh, no more, more than 0.8, 0.85. So the things that I can see are more around 90 percent with accuracy 90 percent. Uh, we cannot. Okay, so that's why later we just try the dictionary method. Uh, method as you can see, that is uh, we can have a way higher than most of uh, all of them. Okay, actually. So later we found that uh, actually this is comparison is unfair. So why? Second, because that- yeah, There's a question. Yeah. Is it, uh, okay. Sorry to interrupt. Um, what is F-score precision and recall? The precision, the precision, okay. So the accuracy and F-score that actually, uh, so the accuracy, which means that how, uh, how the overall percentage that is accurately classified. So like we have two civil or uncivil. So which means that the 90 uh, point uh, 92, which means the 92 percent uh, are correctly classified. So the precision, which means that if um, the precision, which means that uh, what we classified as uncivil. Uh, so I'm sorry, I will use another. 94% uh, of what we classified as uncivil using our machine, that actually is indeed uncivil. So the recall means that uh, the uncivil comments, so 93% of the uncivil comments in the validation data that has been, have been classified into uncivil by our model. Okay, this is a recall. So the F score actually is a con uh, it's a combination of a precision and a recall. Okay, so I'm like a, just a compromised uh, matrix to marry it. Uh, the accuracy is the overall. So basically, we expect that we we uh, as I just mentioned, sometimes that the precision will be very high, but the recall will be very low. So if you just use a few uh, very accurate. Uh, words. Okay. Thank you. So anyway, so um, later we found that actually this kind of comparison is not it's it's unfair. The reason is that for the dictionary method, that actually we use the more information than this kind of uh, uh, supervised machine learning models. Why? Because the dictionary the dictionary we enriched or we constructed that actually we use the information from the word embeddings. Think about that, what, it, what is the word embedding? The word embedding actually use the information from the whole corpus, that all the comments, okay, from all the comments. But for them, but for this uh, super, this supervised machine learning models that we just use the, the information from the, the validation data set the human encoded data set. So it's unfair, okay? So we that's why we have a table two uh, about that. We just uh, try to make it, uh, uh, try, uh, try to incorporate the word embeddings into the, the supervised machine learning models. So that is one way that is uh, we, we just uh, use, um, um, the first, like uh, naive Bayes logistic regression SV, 
and, and random forest the SGD. Oh, by the way, so if you don't know uh, what, what are the difference between the, the machine learning models, I, I guess that as beginners, that is pretty okay. So you, you don't even know the details. Uh, the, the norm, okay? The norm is that usually we try many <laughs> and pick the best one. So anyway, so, so you, you don't need to understand the details of the machine learning models, but you just know that it, the models can help you to classify the, uh, the text into different categories. And uh, by the way, here, that uh, this is, we just use uh, uh, based on the, uh, the document term matrix here, we just, uh, uh, we, instead of using the document term matrix, so we use the word embedding. So think about that for the wording, uh, for the document term matrix that you just use the term frequency or TF, IDF, but for the, the, the word embeddings that you consider each word as a vector, okay? So, and then you can just average your cross so like in a document, in a document, maybe have 1,000, again, have 1,000 word. So for each word that is, uh, that is a vector, so you can just aver average them, okay, as the representation of the document. And then you can just, uh, so in that case, that in, uh, you will have uh, uh, 250 dimensions. So you have a 250 uh, independent variables and you use those variables to predict uh civil or uncivil so this is the simplest way that you can just incorporate the word embedding into uh, machine learning so in addition to those models that we also try the deep learning deep learning models like cnn lstm rcn whatever so that those are the the state of art really okay using incorporating both word embedding and deep learning so you will see that a slightly improved for, for, this, for these models, in particular about the deep learning models uh, like the CNN, okay? Recurrent con convolutional neural network, but it's not as good as our very naive dictionary me uh, based method, okay? Uh, this is a lot of a, I need, uh, what 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 is that identified? Okay, uh, the the uh, most of the frequent uh, vocal words and the name calling terms. Okay, it's, it's a not so surprise. Okay, so anyway, so we have another way that to validate to show um, our method is really the validate. That is, so uh, we also calculate the trend. Uh, calculated the trend, uh, show the trend of the percentage of uncivil comments uh, over the years. So we start from 2011. As I mentioned, there are two peaks. One is around 2014. Okay, this is the uh, operating movement. And since then that you will see, okay, there are several incidents, conflicts, okay. Uh, no conflict conf uh, in Hong Kong, okay. So and in the second, North, largest peak that is uh, uh, actually is uh, in 2019, okay? That is uh, 2019's protest. Okay, you will see that this is a, to show the face validity, okay, of our method. So indeed that what we detect using the dictionary that can reflect the, the reality. Um, so if the method is, uh, uh, is valid, so if the method is val valid, okay, so and the next question as I just mentioned, so during, during the process, actually we require a lot of uh, human coding and filtering, right? So, so I just want to, and also we, we first we have, we construct a dictionary with some seed words that we believe based on our existing knowledge that we believe those are indeed the vulgar words in name calling, uh, pretty sure, okay? So um, the question is that if we want to uh, use the method, replicate the method, uh, apply this method to other languages and to develop new dictionaries. So the, 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 the 
the next question is about, about the, the efficiency, okay? How many rounds that we need to repeat? The second is how many words that we need to include in the seed words. So to, <clears throat> to test this that we, we tried, okay? We just uh, tried a different numbers of seed words like 10 from 10, 15 and 100. We just uh, randomly selected the 10, okay? Purely randomly, okay? Computer random. So that we just randomly, for example, we randomly select the 10 seed words, okay? It could be any, okay? From, from the seed words, not. Uh, I can tell you that initially for our uh, dictionary for here, that what we did in the seed words that actually we included many, okay? We included around 300 seed words. So anyway, so that would be maybe too many, okay, for for. Oh, for, we have a question okay. again. Uh, yeah. Can you uh, elaborate what is seed words? Yeah. The seed <laughs> words that is that uh, uh, we use to based on for uh, enrichment. So we need to first the seed words that we need, first we need to have some words in the dictionary, and mm -hmm. then we find the top top similar words to enrich that dictionary. So for example, you, you, can, you can just start from Liaohai, okay? And then you find a similar words to Liaohai. And that word, if you identify that, that it's really similar to Liaohai, so you will have two, okay? The seed words that you, you need to start from them. Is that okay? Yes, yeah, so uh, is that similar to um, the initial, the initial dictionary, okay. So that means, which means that uh, if you want to use the, this method, you, you need to initially to come up a list of uh, keywords, okay. So what, uh, does that have anything to do with steaming? Uh, no. Does it have anything to do with steaming? Uh, yes, yeah. He's asking, does it have anything to do with stemming? No, no. no. Oh. Hi, could you hear us? I uh, know. <laughs> Sorry. So, so if he's asking, does seed words have anything to do with stemming? I, I stemming. Okay. Do. No, the, 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 there's no problem for Chinese. No stemming. Oh. We don't need to do oh, stemming okay. for Chinese. Okay. okay. <laughs> Oh, by the way, that if for English, should we do stemming? The answer is no. Why? Because that way you already use the raw text for to train the word embedding. And the natural supposedly that uh, uh, the variations of the words of the English words that will be very close in uh, according to the seminarity scores. So you will keep the different forms of that word, have, having, had. So they, they will naturally group together. And if you want to develop that kind of dictionary, for sure, you need to keep just to keep have, having, had, okay? Not just to use the, the, the stem or the number. But this is a, there is no such a problem in Chinese, okay? Uh, uh, back to the point about the efficiency, okay? How many rounds that you need to repeat and uh, how many words that you need to include in the seed words. So we randomly selected 10, 15, and 100. And you will see after uh, eight or nine uh, uh, rounds that you will see that actually they will converge. So there are not so much difference, but for sure. So initially, if you include in more, like if you include, 100, if you include the 100, so probably that you can just repeat it five to six uh, rounds that would be pretty much enough, at least in our case, okay? So uh, again, so which means that actually the selection of the seed words uh, actually is not so important here. So if you have enough time, you know, somehow it will converge. Okay, and it's actually it's quickly, okay. So this is about how many, uh, the y, uh, the y axis here is a, a number of uncivil words that we can recover using like uh, from 
from 10 seed words and repeat how many times that actually this is a this is a total of total number of uncivil words in our dictionary. Okay, I, I, as you can see, there is a gap. We can never, if you're using random, if you're using the random number. So that means that you can understand that you just pick some seed words just randomly, okay? So you cannot always that achieve that. Uh, you cannot get a, a, a comprehensive dictionary. But uh, the, the, the good thing is that in terms of the percentage, um, means that uh, uh, the, in terms of the accuracy, okay? So you will see, actually, even we missed uh, many, okay? Several, around 200, okay? We will miss 200 if you would just use a random sampling as a seed word. Uh, it's not so uh, important at all, okay? Because those words actually can just cover less than 10% of the, of the uncivil incidents. So you will see the accuracy here, the coverage is that actually even the 100 and uh, 1,400 words that we generated based on the random words that can cover uh, more than 95% of the overall uncivil in incidents in our data. Okay, so uh, basically the take home uh, message is here that basically that you can just randomly, if you are, so there is a big assumption here that if you are wording embedding model, okay, if you work to vector model is, uh, is good enough, okay, which means that you indeed have a very large scale coverage to train the word embeddings. Uh, you can just randomly select, you can just uh, randomly select the randomly small set of set of words to start with. And you can just uh, repeat it several rounds, okay, like five to six, and you will get a very uh, good dictionary with high accuracy. Oh, I'm sorry. So I, uh, so I, I guess that I have to move to the second part. Uh, uh, so this is just the, I, I, I um, about the detection of instability. So the second part is about the consequence. So uh, again, so uh, this is a point I just mentioned. So the content uh, is not equal to the perceptions. So there are different things. So here is that we're just talking about the the content features, the uncivil content. So the machine learning, that is uh, why we need to use machine learning instead of uh, using experiments to test the consequence of the uncivil content, okay? So like uh, just, uh, if you want to study, like um, uh, in many studies that if you want to know the consequence of uh, uh, uncivil expressions that you can just uh, uh, recruit some sub uh, participants and it just uh, led them to read some uh, civil comments or civil comments and then you can just measure something uh, in different ways. So why we cannot do that? Uh, but for sure we can do that. But what, what's, what's the problem? What's the disadvantage? So the, there is a big problem is that is about the treatment. So think about that. The treatment is what? It's uncivil. This is not just a, uh, talking about uncivil uh, incivility experiments, but also about any experiments using content as a, as a, as a treatment, as a, as a stimulant. So why? Because actually, usually what, do you, what is uncivil comments? That is for sure that you need to present like a paragraph, okay, to your to your to your subject to your subject. The problem is that within that content, within that comment, within that that paragraph, in addition to the uncivil features, like name calling, the bad words, hate speech, and whatever else, there must be something. There must be something else, right? You don't know whether those features will influence your subjects or not. You don't know, right? So that will be served as a confounding variables. We need to control. 
So even in a running experiment, that probably the presentation of the stimuli, okay, in the text formats that we may involve in some confounding variables. Yes, yes. So that's sometimes that that's why sometimes we also needed to use uh, statistics to deal with that. Okay. So once a psychologist, uh, I like that uh, uh, statements very much. Once a psychologist said that if you need a very com complicated statistics, which means that your design is not so good. Okay. <laughs> So anyway, for sure that you can have a better experiment design to solve that problem, but usually we, we are not so that smart. So we use complicated statistics. <laughs> so anyway, so uh, this is an example, uh, as I just mentioned in the discussion forums that we want to study whether the incivility, okay, uh, the consequence of the incivility on next engagement, uh, which means that whether, uh, the comments with uh, uncivil features that will get more like replies on likes and whatever else. And whether in a thread the contents, including the uncivil features that will have more, okay? Have more replies that are also using uh, the uncivil features like name calling or bad words as well. So this is uh, the interface that you can see that it's not so difficult to measure like the engagement uh, and a replies and as well. Uh, the second is that um, uh, this is a dependent variable. For the independent variable that it's incivility could be measured using a dictionary as I just mentioned, right? So that you can whether uh, in this paragraph, okay, in the, in the, in the, in the comments that it contain, including any words in the dictionary uh, will classify into civil or uncivil. So, but there are the important things that uh, for, we cannot just uh, do a uh, regression or just uh, do a t-test, okay? Just uh, to see the incivility, the difference uh, in terms of engagement that it, uh, are different between the civil and uncivil comments. We cannot do that. The reason is that there are a lot of confounding variables in this context. So the first uh, at a user level, okay? So this is who actually posted that because someone may be more influential than the others. So anyway, that actually you can find a lot of characteristics here. So one way is that you can include all the variables in the regression model, okay, as a control variables. But uh, actually this is a not good way. Why? Because we cannot, uh, we don't know uh, all the confounding variables about the, at the user level. So a better way that is that it, like you are, now we have a really big data. Right, so you will see this user many times, uh, which means that you can use a fixed effect model that to control all the variables at the user level. Now, the second, the second uh, confounding variable that is a uh, contextual, okay, that is a when, uh, when actually the the post was posted, okay, so next if you are posted, which next next the timing, so. Sometimes I can, in particular, actually in the afternoon, probably that you post something that it will get more replies as well. You can try, okay? Even on Facebook, this is true, okay? Uh, so in this way that, again, okay, so uh, we don't have a better way to control all the contextual variables. So uh, here, uh, we just are using uh, some variables like uh, uh, the timing, okay? It means the, the hour of the day that it posted the post and uh, the audience availability that means uh, uh, how many audience actually are online or whatever. So you can just uh, try your best to, do, to, to, to come up with a list of this kind of variables. So uh, the most important things uh, uh, here is about the text. So as I just mentioned, we need to control for the text, right? So other than the uncivil words, okay, the uncivil words actually is a kind of a text. So think about that, we just use the predict. Uh, we use the text as independent variable here, that is the instability, okay? And also we need to control for other features. Yes, 
So there are several problems of this kind of things. First is about the text for sure that I can represent as a document term matrix, right? As I just mentioned, this is a high dimensional. Maybe that I, uh, in your document term matrix that it will be several thousand, okay, at least variables. You cannot just put everything in a, in a regression model. So that's why we need a machine learning. So basically we are here, we just introduced two of them. That is uh, to control for text. That is uh, the first one is double machine learning. The second is W Roberts learner. I will show you actually, this is uh, uh, actually uh, why we call it double machine learning. That is because that we want to uh, machine learning models. So think about that this is your treatment. Like here, that is the incivility on civil a lot. Why is uh, your dependent variables that are engagement? The problem is that there are a lot of uh, component variables as I just mentioned, you can just use a fixed effect model and control, our, uh, control the variables as well to control for that. But there is a very important uh, component variable that is the content or the text here. So the text could be have many different features, right? So we need to control them. So what are the features that I just mentioned? The one way that you can just measure those features, like the topics and the emotionality. So whether they expressed some emotions in the text, right? So many, many other features, right? This, as I just mentioned, this is at, at the very beginning, this is a not good way. So the better way that is, how about just to consider them as a latent variables? So what is the latent variables? Latent variable means that is a variable, there are some variables, but we cannot observe. And we don't even care about that. Do you care about that? We don't care about that. We only care about the T and Y, whether T, the relationship between T and Y. We don't care about all the confounding variables. We just want to control for them. So we, in that way, so we can represent the text in many ways. You can just represent it, use the DFIDF on a document term matrix, or you can just represent it using word embedding. And then you use those texts to predict the T. This is a model one, okay? Uh, uh, no, this is model T, okay? Sometimes we we'll also call it the propensity score, propensity model, propensity score model. Why? Because the T actually is the incidence, right? This is the propensity score. So that I use machine learning to predict the T. And the second is the predict Y, that is the regression model, okay? Use the X to predict Y. This is the second one. And then what we can do, we use the Y, the original value, to minus the prediction from the, the model this model, model one, okay? And similarly for T, we use the original T to minus that one. This is what we call D bias regression. So what is the D bias? That means that we have partial out the confounding influence from the text. So now we can just regress Y on T and you will get this is a treatment effect, okay? And then what's new here? As I just mentioned, you can also add the fixed effect or other control variables to control the user number, uh, confounding variables, right? Right, okay. So uh, the second is uh, W Roberts uh, learner, okay? So it's quite similar. So we also have a several steps, but, but here that is more, in, uh, um, it's good, okay? to inertia in this way that to show you what we call cross fitting. So here, what I just introduced for the deep bias model that we also need to use what we call cross fitting. So to overcome the overfitting problem. So because as I just mentioned, there are a lot of uh, variables, latent variables here that it would be very easy to get it overfitted. So the easy way that we do that is we split the data into two like you are doing cross-validation in machine learning. Just we fit the models, like fit the MYMT, the models using one data set, one sample. But later, we fit the model, the regression model using 
another sample. So this will overcome the cross fitting. Uh, this, this is what we call cross fitting and it can overcome the overfitting problem. So the similar here, that is for the DR, DR learner, okay? So we, we split into three samples. X is a confounding variable, T is a treatment, and Y is a dependent variable, okay? So we split into three. And for the one, the first one, this is a propensity score machine learning model, right? And the second, we run actually separately for T equals zero, that is the control group. T equals one, this is the treatment group. So we fit the, fit the models, the X and Y, that separately for the control groups and for the treatment group. And finally, we can construct according to this formula to construct what we call pseudo treatment effect. And then we use the, the third sample to estimate it, to estimate the treatment effect, okay? Yes? Okay. One second. Yeah, here. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I can hear you. Yeah, okay. Uh, so for T0, this is like no instability were in yeah. the code. Okay, okay. So that's why, uh, what we call treatment or control group. Anyway, so there's a very good thing for this kind of uh, machine learning model. That is uh, why we call it the W Roberts. So which means that it, now, now you see that actually, basically we, in both models, we train two machine learning model, right? That is Y, X, and T, X, right? So W Roberts means that if there, is only one is correct, and the overall estimation will be correct. So which means that even 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 like the T X is wrong, okay? You fit the model in a wrong way. But if you can, if if the Y or X that is correct, then the overall will be correct. Okay, it's something really good, right? But the reality is. Uh, uh, usually both are wrong. <laughs> so anyway, I will show you uh, the results here. One quick here. question, sorry, one, yeah. one quick question. Yeah. So does it does it mean we can just add more models and make triply, quadruply, pentably more robust machine learning models and hope that at least one of them is correct and it'll work? Can, can you repeat it, your question again? <laughs> Sorry. I was saying if say you're you said that both may be incorrect. So what if we yeah. can add one yeah. more? So we'll have a triply robust machine learning model. And then if that is incorrect, then we have a fourth one. So quadruply robust machine learning model. So are those also feasible alternatives? So do you mean um I, I, I mean both are incorrect? So the reason uh whether whether um whether the models are correct or not actually is something that we don't know. So yeah. Yeah. So just to be safe, can we add more than two? Yeah. We can add more than two? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So uh, by the way, so I need to clarify a little bit. So we're not talking about the machine learning is good or bad or correct or, or, or wrong. That actually here is not a talking about the accuracy. Like you are running supervised machine learning for classification. So here that means that is theoretically speaking, whether it's good, uh, it's correct or not. So this is a really based on the theoretical assumptions. Uh, the the coral map. So anyway, as you can see, oh, we we try different model. Uh, we try the different like the OLS that uh, we estimate the the number of replies that will be positive, and even we use a fixed effect uh, to control. Uh, part of uh, uh, the user level company variables that is uh, still positive. But uh, once we control for the text, use uh, double machine learning uh, or the uh, W Roberts learner, that it will see that actually uh, the estimation will be quite different. So basically, uh, no, so or even negative. So which means that a company, including the on civil words, probably that what can de decrease engagement, okay, not increase. But in terms of the percentage, okay, so that actually the 
it's the, the estimation will be more consistent and it's positive. So if that is thread contained, if the, the seed post, that means the first post of in the thread, that including some uh, uncivil words that probably that it will include uh, the, the replies that uh, also using the uncivil, including uncivil words that the percentage, increase the percentage is of more than it's around five percentage. Okay, that means you include the five percentage of the re overall replies that are including the uncivil words. So uh, the pattern is uh, actually similar. Uh, you will see this is for the different uh, the, uh, forum. This is for LIHKG and this is for uh, Hong Kong Discuss. So uh, using uh, the double machinery and the W Robertson uh, models that you will see the estimations are consistent. Uh, even across the discussion forums, but not for like OLS, ordinary least square estimation. So uh, anyway, so I guess that I can spend five more minutes, right? I'm sorry. So um, uh, to talk about the survey experiment. So again, as I just mentioned, so uh, when you want to study uh, like the incivility consequence, naturally, the first thing that you want to conduct uh, an experiment. And indeed, we actually, we conducted an experiment at the first time. And then we move on to what we call double machine learning model. So uh, this is actually a survey experiment. So we, we initially, we, we, we have 500 comments. We, we first, we gather 500 comments, including both civil and uncivil comments. And then we uh, we recruit 800, eight, more than 800 respondents, and then we're randomly uh, the comments to them, ask them to read the perceived incivility. So each respondent supposedly will read 10 comments of them. So um, this is the results. And actually, uh, the rate of about incivility is range from one to seven, but you will see that the difference estimated that is quite small. Okay, it's very small. That is around the five of no zero point five. It's around zero point five. That is quite small, but it's positive, which means that indeed they will consider the comments including the uncivil words will be more uncivil, but it's not that so uncivil. So uh, again, this 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 is uh, confirms what I just mentioned at the very beginning that the content actually is different from perceptions, and also they have different consequences. So um, as I promise, uh, promised, I will show you that the text effect results that we run from. So first, uh, the text effect model that you must based on the experiment, as I just mentioned. So for, for the observational data that you cannot, that certainly violate the assumptions. So you need to run the survey experiment in a way, as I just mentioned, you just have a very large, a relatively large stimulus, like 500 unique comments and are assigned randomly to the each respondents asking them to rate the perceived incivility. So, and then you will detect something like this. So finally, what you can find uh, you, you will get from the model, that is something like this. So the number here, that it means that different text features. So you will see there are some text features is positively associated perceived instability, uh, some are negative. So whatever, so probably like this one that is a feature three and a feature eight. So what are feature three and a feature eight is that you need to go to here. There were, it's, you can interpret it exactly like you how to interpret uh, the topic of modeling. They will, they will tell you that in feature three, okay, like this one, this is a positively associated with perceived instability, uh, are those features, the top of words here. So uh, anyway, so I, I know some of you may uh, don't read the Chinese, but even you can read the Chinese, you, you read the Chinese, you don't know what's here. So, it's meaningless, at least for me. I can't, I don't, I cannot make sense of this cluster of words. I don't know why people think that uh, containing those words 
They are not a vulgar words, not bad words, dirty words, or whatever. But they generally they consider those words as more unsafe than others, including those features. So the tax effect model that it would be uh, if, so regularly speaking, it's very attractive. But the problem is that usually, like topic modeling, this is a reality. So uh, you 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 read a lot of articles, including very good results, clean results. But uh, uh, this is a reality. What you can get from from your own projects usually like this, <laughs> you cannot make sense of them at all. So anyway, just uh, for uh, for your information, okay. So um, this is a, a one more thing about that, as I just mentioned here uh, briefly. So I, I just mentioned that it, uh, the uncivil perceptions that if you really consider something that is uncivil, that it would be different from the common features. What here that we found the consequence of our engagement and also uh, the contagion effect that it's all about the common features, not about the perceptions, okay? So which means that probably that is not a, maybe the consequence, okay? Maybe uh, may follow different mechanisms, okay? Not like, uh, so regularly speaking, that is uh, uh, the researchers argued that like the uncivil cues that actually can increase uh, like emotions, attentions and whatever, maybe not the case here. It's more likely that they just consider, the, the users just consider them as some um, buzzwords, okay, kind of the features, okay, not like a, not what we mean in civility, okay, it's not, it's, it's more likely driven by some conversational norms that whether we can use those words because then we just copy you because you use that word and we, we find that it's very interesting, so we just use that one. So uh, in that case, you can even, um, formally to model the conversational norms that how the people use that those on what we call on civil words online, okay, uh, in the discussion forums. So uh, yes, so this is the end. So some practical suggestions. So uh, as we introduce the, 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 the word embedding enrichment for the dictionary uh, construction. So for sure that is a, you cannot replace experts so we, we need the domain knowledge that to, for manual filtering and also to construct some seed words. Even as I just mentioned, the seed words selection is not so that important. Uh, the second is a few states can generate the most keywords. Okay, so uh, the last one is best for enrichment and not, but not, from, so not, not, not for dictionary construction, which means that you construct from, from the scratch. Uh, I don't think that is a good way. Okay, so it's best for just for enrichment. You already have some, but you you cannot guarantee the the comprehensiveness. So now um, this might be a way, okay, for you to enrich the keywords or the dictionary. So way is the next can okay. So this is might be a, a just a, a a bias in our in our in our case that uh, the dictionary method is better than. Uh, all the supervised machine learning models, but this is not the the rule. Okay, this is not the, the the universally correct for sure. So for me, I think that a supervised machine learning in most uh, situations may be better uh, than dictionary. But when is the lexicon method is better? That is better for shorter texts. So in our case, that the comments usually are very short, and this is a urine, uh not good for most of the supervised machine learning models. Uh, and the second is that uh, the small data for training models. So what? So the deep learning model is uh, are really good, but uh, I guess that are not so good for uh, the small data sets, but for ve really very very large scales with millions, uh, even billions of uh, of uh, of uh, uh, documents. That will be good, much better. So uh, uh, the third one is a keyword-based task because that um, the uncivil expressions in Cantonese in particular, that is really keyword-based. So that is in nature, that is the task is uh, the keyword-based task, okay? So we don't need to infer something 
uh, from from the ex expressions. And usually, for normal people that we usually identify whether a document or uh, a comment is civil or uncivil, usually based on some keywords that we already have. Uh -huh. So that is just a special case that uh, are maybe more appropriate uh, for, for the dictionary method best. So the last one, uh, as I, I mentioned, is emphasized several times that the manifested content is not the, not maybe probably not the concepts that you want to measure. So uh, the incivility is just the one of the examples. So what we can measure is from the manifested content, okay, from the from the expressed text. Probably maybe it's not directly related to the concept in the theory. Okay. Uh, another example is emotion. Okay. So we, we did a lot of emotional sentiment analysis on um, our social media platforms. So the big challenge for this kind of approach is that you only you need to differentiate between what they express or what they think. Okay. So probably that they express, they use some words that the emotional and it, Probably they are not so emotional, okay? They are not means that they feel in that way, okay? So what we measured in most sentiment analysis is what we call the, uh, the express the emotion or the manifest the emotion, not the emotion, psychologic in psychological sense. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, my suggestion, okay, that is um, something that uh, not say not new at all that it would be better combining the computational approach with other uh, methods like survey and ex experiment, okay. So, uh, yes, so that's all and uh, thank you. So uh, uh, anyway, so if you have uh, any uh, questions after today's discussions that you can also send me an email and also you can visit my website as well. Now, can you uh, stay just for a, a quick Q and A? Yeah, uh, sure, sure, sure. I have plenty of time. Because, uh, you know, even though you know we're we're not talking about uh, Cantonese, okay, in this case, and it's a uh, it's not even the formal Cantonese. It's a, it's a Reddit, okay, very chaotic, very informal way, full of foul language expressions, right? But still, the fundamental procedure of uh, mining of uh, uh, analytics are largely the same, okay? There are specifics because of the language, because of the uh, context, but then the procedures, the, met the methods are still uh, you know, quite, so it's, uh, if, we, if we think about this talk alongside uh, yesterday, what Jason, you know, uh, talk about as a, like a, the keyword embedding, okay? All the previous, okay, uh, uh, you know, keynotes, so I think there are lots of uh, consistency, okay, in terms of the basic uh, uh, methodological techniques, right? Any question? Yes, please, yeah. Uh, uh, I think if you speak up, I think he can hear you, yes. Okay, I'll turn that, so... Uh, can you hear Liang? Uh, no, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so you better come, come over, yeah. <laughs> So this is Huang Fan from uh, SMU. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Uh, 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 can I ask a few uh, technical uh, questions? Sure. So there is. Uh, 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 could you please go to the page uh, of the double machine learning? So the, the there is some uh, formulas. So. Uh, this one. Uh, the, the previous oh, one. This, this one. Uh, yeah, 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 this one. So uh, the 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 force the force formula. So yes. uh, uh, can, can you uh, can you make some uh, few uh, detailed explanations about the alpha? Uh, what does the alpha mean? So it's just okay. This a, is a, just a simple regression. Okay, like uh, any. This is a, oh, just, this uh, is a just a regression model. OLS regression. Oh, and this oh. is the intercept. And this is a T. Okay, uh, F E actually. Oh. So for the fixed oh, thing, sure. you, you can just uh, uh, use uh, uh, the username or the ID uh, 
uh, transformed to the binary variables that is equivalent to the fixed effect model. Okay, so this is a uh, here. It's just the oh. OAS ordinary needs the square. Oh, I get it. So, <laughs> oh, okay. So, uh, there there is also a question question mark. So, does that mean uh, you can add a few? You can more add more variables here. Control variables. Yeah. Yeah, to control and have a try. So. Mm. So here the the ID should be the vectors. So it should, should be the embedding. I, I, ID uh, that is the username or the user mm -hmm. ID. Oh uh, yeah, I, I mean so because uh, I want to control the user level compounding variable. Uh, uh huh. Uh, and and uh, to fit in this formula, so the the the, the features we selected should be transformed to a embedding or to say a vector to. to um, this, uh, no, you you. Uh, 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 I mean you can use any. You can yeah. represent it anyway. Yeah. Can you say so the t hat is the is the main independent variable, but the fixed effect IDs are just uh, categorical variables representing yeah, yeah, each category. Yeah. yeah. So so don't have to uh, use uh, word embeddings to process it. Yeah, we you can, can just use DF ID. Uh, no, the document term matrix as well. Uh, you, uh, you, so so you use the TF idea here. Yes. So. Oh, 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 thank you. And for also for the, also for the, uh, the, the next page, the next page, uh, I, I see there is a, a T1, T2, T3. So they are all, uh, the structure are the similar, but, the, uh, but, but they are running simultaneously. So for the different small tasks, uh, subtasks. Uh, yeah, they are just the, some samples. Just, just um, to randomly split this this population in, into three samples. So the, mm. oh, the so so the so the samples is uh, For so, the, so the sampling. Oh, uh, so so the sampling is uh, oh so the sampling is from the, yeah random sampling. Uh -huh. It's it's just for the data set. Yes. So, yeah. Oh, okay. so the three values of the independent variable. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, and uh, for. Oh, and also uh, one last uh, one last question in the uh, uh, in the last uh, slide, the, the last the, uh, the end the end the end the, the end. end. Oh, the last one. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, for the for for the second part, so when is the le lexicon is better? So uh, here you mentioned the small data for the training deep deep learning models, but but uh, but for the pre-trained models, the, the like the like the like the transformer models, like the birds, the birdha, so they yeah. already have some. Yeah, they already have some prior. Uh, I, we can see that uh, we can see that the knowledge prior knowledge. So uh, and uh, currently seems the prompting method uh, can so, so just a few a few data sets. Uh, a very small data set can fine tuning those uh, pre trained models, can also work uh, uh, sound, uh, obviously. But uh, it, yeah, I, I would like to hear you uh, about this point. Yeah, so, actually, that, that's a very good question. Thank you. So um, I, I, I almost for, for, forgot to uh, talk about that. So you are, you are correct. So. Uh, for the word embedding models, as I just mentioned, there, there are some new development and also print trained models that are based on, uh, in particular, like to Google, that are based on very, really, truly large scale coppers. So, um, in those cases, that you can just use the print trained models that are definitely that are known you, okay, to facilitate your models to even fit uh, small data sets or even shorter text. So, think about that for the, for the tweets. Uh, they are short, right? So uh, think about that, you can just uh, use the uh, embeddings to enrich your data. What I mean, so even for a single tweet, maybe less than um, 15 words, but for each word that you can just uh, uh, convert to a vector that include a lot of information outside of the, even the Twitter spurs, right? Uh, the problem here, so in, in, uh, in my case is that uh, we <laughs> don't have that, uh, uh, print chain models in Cantonese that uh, uh, I will I will publish my 
that is probably the first one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you need to train, train your, you have to, I have, we have to just to train our own word embedding wow. instead of really spend a lot of time on it. But unfortunately, if you are working uh, in English, oh, yeah. so that will pretty yeah. fine. There are a lot of resources. Okay. So there is a, even Facebook, you know, Facebook have very good resources on, uh, um, on the word embeddings that is a fast text. Yeah. Uh, you can show your fast text models. There are a lot of even multi uh, uh, languages. So you can, you, can, you can just download directly. Okay. That is very use, uh, uh, very handy. Okay. I, I use a lot of times so of using uh, that one Facebook, that fast text. Okay. But, but anyway, so for the print train model, you can solve the general problems that you can use a transformer that to solve some um, even specific tasks, but but not always that are useful in particular in social science as uh, as we, we just discussed. But if you want to detect next gender uh, stereotype or bio media bias and whatever, so there are, there are something that we are interested in, right? So you, you, you must train your own model. You must have your own data, okay? So, but anyway, so English will be much easier. Oh, so uh, it, it's my first time to know there is no uh, pre-trained model in the Chinese language. So that, that yeah, there, there are some uh, simplified uh, Chinese model uh, as well, but not so good. How much, not much. Yeah. yeah in, in Mandarin there are, there there has been you know uh, a, a tradition you know there are more existing models and oh. uh, lexicon and uh, but then yesterday actually we had uh, some discussion like uh, this is an area for example okay uh, you can have the first trained model for yeah. probably Malay okay or Thai or Singlish all right mm -hmm. and uh, but then the uh, uh, so this is a question here it's like uh, uh, the context that you work with, because online, okay, uh, 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 like the, if we build the online dictionary, we know there's a sense of online is uh, different from offline, and online the linguistic evolution is much faster, like a, like a, a word may acquire different meaning, okay, a year from now. So what? How do you think about this? Like a, there's a transient uh, nature, right? If you build the model. Maybe it's good for your data from uh, 2019 or two, uh, uh, two years ago, but then it will evolve. How to deal with this? Uh, oh, that's a really, <laughs> that's a really, I can tell you that's a really good question. And there's a lot of discussions uh, among, uh, in computer science about that. So the first, uh, there's a middle level um, solution. So, so you train, uh, the corporates every year. So uh, that actually you will see the big, uh, the giant companies like uh, Google and Facebook that is, uh, indeed they did it in this way. And also um, because there are in, in particular about tax mining, okay. And so for, for this kind of, for image analysis or classification that is more, I mean, more universal. But for tax mining, the, you, you, really that is the con depends on the, the context and also that it depends on the cultures. So there are some models that is a, a particular design to transform like a one uh, a word embedding in one language to another that we call um, alignment. Okay, you can just use that keyword and you find a lot of that kind of models that to, so, so the alignment that is a task like to, to translate it, to translate the the, the example I just mentioned the left and the right politics in the West and to Chinese. So the kind of alignment in that way. So uh, this is uh, what, I, what I mean, that is uh, indeed we have some tools that we can solve the problem. But I guess that uh, Jack, uh, uh, the question is more fundamental. So this is uh, uh, the big challenge for, for the machine learning uh, researchers. So think about that what we learn, it's just something superficial, that we, what we call superficial, uh, or in a plain language, that means coordination. So that is not, a, not a, the, the rules, uh, not even the norm, norms. So that's why you will see that is a change the year by year, okay, here or there. So that's a bigger problem. And there is a, a group of machine learning researchers that usually um, 
from the coral inference so uh, uh, circle. So that is the one to develop uh, the machine learning models that not to nerd the superficial correlations, but uh, to nerd the causal relationships. And they say, they believe that is indeed th th there are something that we can we can learn. Okay, the machine can learn, and then those rules and norms that is a causal relationship, and uh, will be uh, more useful. Okay, and even more fundamental. So, um, so there's a big uh, 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 there's a master in this area that you can search. That is called Judy. Oh, that I will type the name here uh, in the chat box that you can see. I'm not sure my type is right. So um, uh, there's a group from the UCLA in particular that are developing some kind of the, the, call, the causal machine learning models, okay? Uh, so uh, as the, the models I just mentioned, the double machine, uh, double machine learning and also the uh, W. Roberts, the models that is all re related to that is a called uh, machine learning models. So uh, the, he uh, the, described the, what the machine learning researchers in particular in the, in, 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 in the companies, in the industry, like Facebook and Google, the, the describe them just doing something uh, they call curve fitting. So they are just the machine learning and just the uh, curve fitting, just the fit of the curves, not to detect the knowledge. It's lunch time. Do we have some final questions? For, okay, one more. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah it's just about uh, like. Uh, your slides. Uh, can you go back to the to the page of uh, incivility results of the part? This one. Yeah, yeah. I'm not. A look, I'm not sure about what you mean in the slide. Can you explain a little bit more about that? Oh, okay. So this is a uh, uh, just the coefficients, and also okay. the confidence interval. The coefficients is uh, the treatment effect here. See, there's a trade. No, I think he's asking about the y axis, right? Yeah. The y axis. I think there's a different models, right? The y axis. Oh. Okay, the, the first is OLS regression. That is, uh, we just uh, use the incivility to predict the number of replies. That's okay. the final uh, two variable. Okay. Uh huh. Now, FE, so we added the one, uh, we, we added this uh, fixed effect, this oh. categorical variable, the ID here to control the user level. And ours, as I just mentioned, is that we consider as a contextual uh, confounding variable that is uh, hour of the day that is posted. Okay. And we we even added a topic. So okay. we, we because that is in the discussion okay. forum, they have different channels. We consider the channel as a different topic. So this is another categorical variable. Okay. And finally, we use the double machine learning model to add okay. the text as a control okay. variable. Okay. okay, so there are the co treatment effects uh, estimated using the different models. And lastly, URL represents what? What is URL? A DRL. A DRL is a double robust learner. So we, we introduced the two. This is a, a double machine learning, DML, and this uh -huh. is a double robust learner. So there are two models. Okay. okay. Okay, uh, and then uh, what do you mean by contagion? Yeah, I'm, I'm very interested. Oh, I'm sorry about that. I just call it a contagion. That actually, I just predict the percentage. So the one dependent variable is the number of replies that are received. Yeah. So this means the percentage of our re replies. Okay, so it's like uh, whether it triggers more. Of, of yeah, the it didn't trigger more. Uh, replies, but indeed, it increased the proportion of the replies, including the uncivil words. Uh, and also, uh, I, I forgot where you mentioned you talk about propensity score. I only know a little bit about that. It seems like some very fundamental, like naive part of like causal inference. Uh, so, 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 
So do, do you mind talking more about like propensity score? Oh, you, you, the, the, uh, actually, this is not a, uh, um, uh, by the way, the propensity score, that is, um, it's a not a good, it's not a, actually, it's yeah, a not a good yeah. method. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's not, <laughs> yeah, I think like clinical science and economists, they don't use propensity score that. Yeah. No, but, but here that we're talking about different things. So we are not oh, using propensity score. I just tell you the, uh, how to measure. So if you use a propensity score, that actually you just use X to predict the, what, the T. Like okay. a T, T is a binary variable, right? So that is actually a logistic regression. So yeah. and then you can just use this uh, X to get a score okay. from zero to one, right? Yeah, that yeah. is called propensity score. Oh. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. okay. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Liao Hai. That was a uh, fantastic uh, sharing. And uh, let's put our hands together for <laughs> Hai Ge. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hope uh, and, uh, someday to meet yeah. you all in person. <laughs> yes, we indeed. We uh, a couple months ago we were planning to bring uh, Hai Ge into Singapore, all right? <laughs> but then because of the uh, COVID, you know, the zero COVID case, you know, he has to go through uh, quarantine when he went back, uh, go, goes back. So he decided not to, but maybe next time, all right? You, yeah. We should definitely have you uh, in person. That would be uh, even better. Yeah, thank you for a, a wonderful uh, keynote and I uh, wish you best of luck to get this work published so that we can read it in the next uh, six, all right, Singapore. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Thank you all. See you. So it's already lunch time and